and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some teamer elementals to kick off our rank up Sunday stream. This is my weekly thing that I like to do on Sundays. Kind of started it last week, but I'm going to be doing this like every Sunday. We're going to be playing four of my favorite decks uh, that, that I have that I think are really strong and decks that I think are, are good at ranking up. And so that's what we're doing today. We got Rank Up Sunday. So as you see here, we're starting with Teamer Elementals. Then we're going to move on to Grixis Control, Soul Tie Flash, and Gruel Midrange. Um, of course, I may have donation decks to do on Sundays at different times. I don't have any right now, but you know, I may also do donation decks. But besides that, we're going to have Rank Up Sunday. Um, Anyway, so what do we have here is we have Teamer Elementals. I've been working on this deck. Uh, as you all know, the last time I really played this deck was whenever we had um, the competitive metagame challenge. And I didn't do nearly as well as I thought I was going to do with the deck. But I, you know, like I took a long look at the deck, saw what was what was going wrong and all that kind of stuff and tried to try to fix some problems. So before I think I, I was I had like the Paradise Druids in here. And I had four Chandra Acolyte of Flames. And I was just, I was um, uh, flooding out too much and not really having enough threats. And the ac while Chandra Acolyte of Flame is absolutely amazing when you have Risen Reef in play, when you don't have Risen Reef, she's not doing a ton, just making two one ones to attack every turn, basically. So we trim back on Chandra's, trim back on Paradise Druids to get some more threats in here. Um, and I've been liking where we're at. And another another thing about the elemental deck is I feel like <clears throat> the elemental decks is kind of like why the scapeshift decks have kind of come up. And people are playing scapeshift to go over the top of like an elemental deck like this. And so I'm actually using a lot of my sideboard slots with the scapeshift deck in mind. As you can see, I'm playing two Blood Suns and two Ashioks. Because that's a matchup that I want to be prepared for after sideboard. I think that's a pretty popular deck right now, and I really want to be prepared for that. Uh, so we got those, and then as you can tell with having all these disdainful strokes, negates, um, also uh, kind of prepared for the Esper Control decks that are also pretty popular, especially how Esper Control with no hero of Precinct 1 is starting to get more popular. And so got to have enough um, for that kind of matchup whenever we take out like Lava Coil and Entrancing Melody and stuff like that. The one matchup that I'm worried about here with how I have this 75 is Vampires. I think that's probably the matchup I'm the most worried about. Um, in particular, Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. I've learned that it's not Soren Vengeful Bloodlord. It's Imperious Bloodlord. Um... Worried about that card. There's just not like a really good. There's not like some really good things to be playing against vampires in these colors. To be honest, it's certainly like the reason why I'm going entrancing melodies to try to take their the one drop knight of the Ebon Legion or a Danto Vanguard from them. You know where like red removal can be kind of difficult against those, especially a Danto Vanguard. Um, so that's certainly a reason for melody. One one card I could be playing is a Spyglass. I don't know exactly like I I don't know exactly where I want to fit a spy glass. Maybe over a fry, honestly. I don't love fry, but I could fit a, si a spy glass in the sideboard, and spy glass can shut off Soren. And also, I mean, spy glass is really good against vampires because not only does it shut off Soren, it shuts off a Danto Vanguard, shuts off uh, Knight of the Ebon Legion. It actually does a lot in that matchup. But anyway, let's get to the games. We're gonna try to. Go big with Teamer Elementals. What's up, Zerv? All right, so we're going ranked. We're going to be playing five matches with each, with each deck. So we're playing 20 matches today. So we should probably get to it. Hey, Gatsby. And seeing how much we rank up. I think I'm at 95%. I was playing a couple of matches earlier with with these decks to get a little bit of practice. And yep, I'm at 95%. So we're going to see how how high we can get today. So yeah, Zerf, Gatsby, Thoril, Starman. Welcome, everybody. Yeah. That's true. Thunderkin Awakener is good with all those cards, but I'm just not, not really playing a lot of those things. 
<laughs> you're welcome, Doc Holiday. Glad you're glad you're learning a bunch. That's what I'm here for. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, we got I got like Mardu Todd today. We got a red, white, and black tie, black shirt. We're going Mardu Todd today. Hmm. This hand had like one Risen Reef to go along with this. This would be nice. Or obviously a mana creature. It's very slow. I mean, I do have my removal on turn two and I'm on the draw. I'm just actually going to keep this. This this can work out. Let's do it. <laughs> Hope work's been going good there, Gatsby. Traveling a lot. Some good traveling. Hope you're seeing a, a bunch of places and everything. See, look at this hand working out already. Leafkin Druid for turn two. Already working out. Kasejo! Or Kasaijo? Go Kasaijo. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Sub number two on the day. All right, kicking today off good. Ah, uh, you are in DF Dubs last week? Nice. I'm jealous. Sweet. Sweet Lava Coil animation. Naya Dinosaurs. Or at least Naya creatures with Marauding Raptor. This could be like Naya Feather that's just playing Marauding Raptor, honestly. Arena's not performing too well today. It's pretty jumpy. Hmm. And this is my better card to play. We already saw one Clarion. I could see, like, another Clarion. I'm going to just go with... Let's just go with these Cavaliers that are going to be hard to kill. Find a blue source. And now we can go Gales. No, I'm not really planning on streaming the pre-con event, RX Jelly. Reap Jaw Raptor. It's just a four or five, it's too small. Melody on Ripjaw Raptor is pretty nice. So, yeah, what decks... What I haven't started the pre-con thing yet. Obviously, I'm going to be doing that because I really want the Unhinged Forest. But what, what deck have y'all really liked with it? I mean, I guess I get to Nyssa plus Steel, but oh well. Could have. You like the Is it deck, Orzov, Rakdos. That's good that y'all are playing different playing different decks. I I took a look at the decks and everything. Um, they all looked pretty good, honestly. Lots of people play Boros. Okay. Demir is the best value. I I was I was thinking that Demir was maybe the one of the lower ones. 6-0 off Orzov. Orzov. That Orzov one did look pretty cool. I like me some good Orzov magic. 
All right, Melody was awesome. Let's play another one. I think that's about all I have here. Disdainful Stroke is honestly probably good. A Disdainful Stroke's probably good. Nissa. I don't know, making a bunch of 3 threes and face of Dinos isn't spectacular. I'm going to be taking out Little Chandra. Do I want to take out a Nissa for a Disdainful Stroke? No, probably not. Kind of do, though. Nah. Playing is it right now? It's hard to win unless you draw Niv. Six. You went six zero with Demir. Wow. If I said I went three zero with Demir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They they all have like some bad cards and they all have some really good rares. So it, that's probably with it being best of one. It's probably just like the person that that draws more of like the good rares. But, I mean, that that's definitely going to be a big part of it compared to the person that has, like, the crappy commons kind of thing. But that's good that they are pretty equal power level. I like that. I feel like I need to put back one of the mana creatures. I guess it's Druid. Darn, should have been the third land. Yeah, these Sahili sleeves are, are pretty sweet. So we got the Got the Healy sleeves, Mu Yanling avatar. Yeah, it should have been the third land. Obviously, I was going to have land land off the top. We did see Clarion last game. Wow. What is this deck doing? Four draws, four lands. Oh, wow. No land for them. That is really, really unfortunate for them. And I finally drew a spell, and it was like the perfect spell. Definitely glad I hydroid crisis. So yeah, they're just trying to draw the the land for Clarion here. I'm so, I'm assuming they did not. All right, rank up Sunday starting with a win. We're going from 95 to 96. See if we can get to the year 2000. Ooh, we got a pack. And a Senate Guild Mage. Crack a pack. We're always wanting to crack Mythics over here. Not a Mythic. I do on wild cards these days. 48 and 5. Raise Mythics. All right. Elementals starting with a win. Here we go. Match number two. Yeah, no, I don't have very many mythics. I ran out of mythic wild cards a couple of weeks ago. I'm back up to having five at least. Because 
M20 has so many good mythics. It drained my mythic count between all the Cavaliers and Soren and Vivian and Johnny. Mu Yanling. All right, we're going to draw Risen Reef for our first draw step. Oh, yeah, Yurok. That was a mythic. Got an Omnath. There's so many good mythics in the set. Storm's favorite mythic, Kethis. That's right, I was keeping the Risen Reef right on top. Hey, what's up, Rye Vale? I'm pretty sure I'm not a mythic, but who knows? Maybe it's a rare. I could be wrong. Told y'all. Kept it right on top. Couldn't get the auto -ragered. So smart. We do not want to see Narset here, because Narset shuts down Cavalier of Gales. Cool, no Narset. Uh, no, there's no rewards for rotation. Yuck. Hmm. This is a whole bunch of bad cards. Our next two draw steps are going to be really bad. I put those back thinking, like, well, Thought Erasure, they'll have nothing to take. But maybe I was supposed to put back lands, hoping they were going to kill the Cavalier and we'd be able to shuffle the lands away. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing the guilds event for the lands. I'm not going to be streaming it, though. Uh-oh. All right, let's draw Lava Coil. Oh, why'd I play all my Leafkin Druids? Sweet. Even better than drawing Lava Coil. Draw Risen Reef into Lava Coil. That was pretty good. Alright, let's draw three. Def I'm going to put the Krasis back. I do not want that Krasis getting... Thought Erasured. I hope they don't kill Cavalier or Gales here, though, because then that shuffles it back. So it's risky. All 
All right, so I need to leave two mana so we could draw Lava Coil. So that's the Leaf King Druids add four. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm going to do 10, draw 5. Really? Come on, deck. I had faith in you. They didn't, even get, they didn't leave me a, a red source untapped. I sh should have manually tapped the, the two druids and the land were all first. Oh, well, we're doing okay. I can have Chandra can recast Coil. Oh, man. Um, hmm. Need a lot of red sources still. Wait. Y'all add five mana t together. Just tap y'all. Play this thing. Witness the ties that bind us all. Play this thing. Living in a monastery full of firebrands? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I like to think I'm a feet. All right. Okay, so we're playing against Espa Hero. Hero. Hero, Esper. So, you know, usually I'd be taking out Lava Coils against Esper. I don't think I want to against Esper Hero. So if we bring in the... We want to try to get some fries in the summer. We don't need any melodies. We already got our tunes. And besides that... I think I want to cut Leafkin Druid, honestly. I think I want to cut a mana creature. And get a disdainful stroke in here. All right, let's give this a try. Disdainful stroke could be bad. Ooh, awesome, Boot. What do you got? I've been playing Super Mario Odyssey. I have defeated Bowser, and now I'm on my way back collecting all the the power moons. There's a thousand power moons in the game. I am currently at like 480 or so ish power moons. So I'm at like 48% through the game. Fire Emblem? Okay. Is it... How? How is Fire Emblem? That was definitely one that I was interested in checking out. You're 10 hours in right now? I know it just came out. I guess I should have had Veil of Summer available there for uh, Thought Erasure. So I guess I should have shocked in. It's amazing. Oh man, all right, I'm going to need to get it. I'll get it after I get done beating Super Mario Odyssey. I can no 
longer. Stand by and watch. Here we go. Hey, thanks, Vance. Oh, right. I can't actually veil a summer because I have to ferry. So I should just put it in a shock land. But getting that thing out of there, you know, like if I just go Risen Reef here, they bounce the Risen Reef, you know, they play whatever and start getting more 1-1s one and everything. And like, you know, Hero just snowballs. I should have played Steam Vents though, of course, because I can't actually veil a summer with Teferi in play. It's alright, we just play the top tap land the very next turn. No big deal. To remind you. I've got time. Yeah, I've never gotten in, into any fire emblem game before. I've never played one before. But I was still still heard this one's pretty good. And yeah, now that Boots been playing it, saying it's good. I'm certainly interested in giving it a try. Get some lands in here. Yeah. Free lands are awesome. That's what I'm talking about. So they have six cards in hand, we have five. Let's try this. So now we have six, they have seven. So we're we're only down one card in hand. But we got an extra three lands in play. And we got all these hydroid crises and stuff. Sorry I'm late. The whole just bouncer isn't reefs plan. Oh, Kinda I'm suspect. Hero thing. Not sure if that's like the best plan. Like doing nothing but bouncing risen reefs. Definitely glad that hero's out here, though. We would have been taking a lot more damage if that hero was in here still. <laughs> oh, I've done the bouncing thing before. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely Teferi's voice line. Come on, more lands. No, I need land. No, I need land. Too many cards, any lands. Where are my lands at? No. Land. No. Yeah. <laughs> Did you order your burger with the triple wreath? Trust me. I have a plan. Boo, were you saying that there's just so much stuff to do in, in Fire Emblem? Is that what you're saying? Ow. They likely have to spark. Really? Is that two?
don't have this correctly still. Green. Green. Just chill out, rope. So if I if I tick up on Nissa, they just spark Nissa right away. They don't, I'm just casting the Cavalier Thorns first. I must seek oh, or they had Elder Spell. Because Chandra, Ac yeah, Chandra Acolyte of Flames is in the deck because of its synergy with Risen Reef, which is incredible. And its ability to recast Lava Coil and Entrancing Melody. So what am I at? 29 cards? 29 is still pretty good. Uh, give me some lands. We will meet again. Do I have to worry about milling out? I think I need to get rid of the Risen Reef, honestly. I have too many cards now. Oh, maybe I gotta get rid of Cavalier Thorns. But do I do certainly need to worry about milling out. Yeah, there's not really a replacement for Omnath in the deck. It's it's definitely like this is definitely worth like Omnath's definitely worth it in this deck. It is incredibly good. Just have three cards. Two, four, six, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Be wary of the ground you walk on. I don't think I really care if they kill an Omnath. 
honestly. I still have three other Omnaths in here that I haven't drawn yet. And the Omnaths can mill me out, mill myself out also. All right, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So twelve. Yeah, it's possible we duck out. Hopefully not. Here goes nothing. But it's possible. Uh, I don't. I don't know Eddie. I haven't played modern in like a year, so I don't. I don't know what I'd play. I'd probably play Eldrazi Tron though again. Like Eldrazi Tron's cool. Always like that deck, of course. Always like the decks you make. I we need to move quickly. So I need I kinda need these risen reefs to die. my opponent to die as well. I've I've definitely played my yeah, I've definitely played Jace in Risen Reef decks before, but I never really I really came to it too often. Like you're usually able to just kill the opponent, even though you have to worry about milling out. But this is a game. This game's a little different. Uh, this this specific game, I, I wish I had a Jace. All right, we got to. Got to play land first, so I do not want to trigger Omnath. Oh gosh, but playing Omnath is going to trigger all these Risen Reefs. Blech. Oh well. Rise, my elemental friend. Really, just didn't use this mana I had floating. Bunch of new burn spells to try on you. Oh, uh. 
I'll learn one of these times I don't actually get to Chandra minus with Teferi in play. One of these days I'll learn that. Today's not that day, though. I'm putting stuff into my hand because if I put it onto the battlefield, I'd have to draw another card with Omnath. If I play a land, I have to draw another card, and I don't want to draw cards, so that's why I'm putting them into my hand, not into play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I not plus bigness of that turn? No, I did before I played Omnath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Good. The land will not forsake you. All right, let's do the thing that I was supposed to do last last turn. Remember this one? Cool. And then, yeah, we were going to be able to play double Omnath to get two Omnath triggers also, if need be. See, that's how I've usually found it. It's like, even if you don't have a Jace, you can still just win. It's You have to be... You have to be aware of not milling yourself too much. Of not milling out. Wait, is this... Is there a sound bug here? Is there arena sound bug right now? My my sound's like down pretty low, so I can't quite tell. If there is, I'll reset arena. No, I think it okay, I think that was just that part of the song. Okay. Hey, what's up, Gomez? Yeah, we are ranking up today. Ah, uh, Sylvan's Awakening. Oh, yeah. You get it. Yeah, Sylvan's Awakening. Get to do so much. Yeah, it was just that part of the song. Question is, do you think that... Do you think the more elemental tribal version of the deck is worth pursuing? Well, my answer there is absolutely. I think everything is always worth pursu pursuing as far as like exploring uh, different archetypes and builds and cards and all that kind of stuff. So the answer is yes to that question. But the question was, do you think 
the more elemental tribal version is better than the version that I'm playing right now? The answer is no, because this is the version that I'm playing here on my rank up Sunday. I really like all four of these decks. Come on. <laughs> you ran out of time with this deck? Really? I have never seen anybody run out of time. I think I had like one match that was like really laggy that I came came kind of close that I think I got to like four minutes or something like a a really long match. I think that's that's like the, the closest I've come. I've seen anybody come. That's more like it. All right. Well, I'm probably going to be losing game one here. But as y'all saw, this is my. I have a, just a ton of stuff for the sideboard. But them having, like them, they have a very good hand here. So probably going to be losing this, but we'll see how sideboarding works. I've got time. Three field of the deads already. Should blow up this blast zone that's sitting there on one. Go ahead, just blow these things up. Yeah, I'm not playing mass manipulation. A little worried about like having the four blue, everything like that. I don't know, just I don't know if it's really necessary, basically. And the games that I'm losing are probably games that I don't have lots of mana. Like the games that I have that we're getting like lots of mana and everything, usually doing pretty good in those games anyway. I could definitely be wrong not playing it. But I'm going Melody in, instead because I want it against like the vampire decks and stuff. The decks, like, Esper is a deck where mass manipulation is awesome against. But I feel pretty good about my Esper matchup. Anyways. Just want to hit lands here. I mean, maybe we can go... Maybe we can go wide enough to, like, kill our opponent with a couple Omnaths. Oh, darn. Or maybe our opponent doesn't have Scape Shift. For their last card. But yeah, that circuitous route was awesome. Let's try this. No, I don't have any big Chandras. This is not a game one matchup that I'm favored in, but I have a ton of stuff in my sideboard for this matchup. That's how it was meant to happen. Where are my lands at? really wish you didn't have to hit done every single like they really make risen reef too slow to resolve this really does take too long to resolve all these triggers
Are you kidding me? There we go, finally. So yeah, I want these Risen Reefs to be three toughness to be able to block zombies. Wait, I just put the forest in my hand? Oh, because the forest, I drew it off Omnath. Thanks, Heretic. Yeah, we did not do a very good job of hitting lands there. And discard six cards. Jeez. Yeah, rower, rower, you know? Yes, I am. The Golos version was a donation deck, Rex. But that was definitely a fun deck to play. That was a donation deck. This is uh, my preferred elemental deck right here. Uh, gross. Yeah, we're, we're losing this game one. Hey, what's up, Radical Guru? Awesome hand there for the opponent. All right, so let's bring in Negates, Disdainful Stroke. I'm going to be playing the Fries to try to kill Little Teferi so I can counter stuff. And then Blood Suns and Ashiox. Cutting. Coil, Melody. I got six more cards. All right, let's see. Maybe some Thorns. Chandra, Thorn, Leafkin, Leafkin, Thorn, Thorn, see I want, I want like Gales and Krasis because they fly over zombies. Maybe I should take out one Omnath? No, I don't know. Omnath's good. Hey, Rockle Guru. Ugh. Ugh. All right, let's see how we do after sideboard. All right, it's my first time ever drawing Blood Sun in standard. I've never had this in my hand ever before in any, any ever on Arena. I've had it in a couple of sideboards here recently, but I've never actually drawn it. I'm going to need to do an arena reset after this anyway. The arena's acting really slow today. Question is if I lead with Risen Reef first or lead with Blood Sun. I'm gonna go Risen Reef. If we hit a land, we can go double Blood Sun. If you show remorse, I'll show this might be a bad idea. Don't make another move. Actually, let's do that. Let's play this crisis. Wow, 
Why would it be bad to play the two of them together? Why would it be bad to have two of these out? Well, this... They can't... You can't Blast Zone when there's a Blood Zone in play. Blast Zones don't do anything. So isn't it better to have two of them in play? Because if they... If they if you just have one, they could play a Teferi and bounce the one. But if you have two, they can't really bounce one. Here we go. Yeah, and I don't I don't think there's any cleansing nova in their deck. Yeah, yeah, they do have like Ixalan's binding sometimes. That is certainly true. All right, so I'm definitely playing one Blood Sun. You just let me know if you're up for round 2. If I go, if I go Elf, Risen Reef, then this adds two mana for Blood Sun, but then I only have one mana left. So now I'm just gonna go double, double Blood Sun. So I couldn't, basically I was trying to think, see if I could like play like, I could play one Blood Sun to hold up Disdainful Stroke, but I couldn't have, like... There wasn't, like, anything, like, special I could do, and like, to hold up Disdainful Stroke also. Now Blast Sun doesn't have a counter on it. So, it's a way to... If they get rid of... They get rid of the Blood Suns, they can blow up a bunch of tokens now. That's pretty sweet. You don't even have to pay life for Shocklands now. Shocklands just enter untapped. Man, that's just good deck building. Prison Realm? What, that takes Krasis? Alright, that's fine. That's not going to beat me. I'll need to counter that. Yeah, that's busted. You don't even have to pay life for Shocklands anymore. Yeah, they could have Deputy of Detention to eat up the Blood Suns. That would be a problem. I got Omnath. Though. But yeah, that would be a problem. Alright, so we got a second Omnath. Let's go and get one in, in play here. But of course, if they do Deputy the Blood Suns, then it's not like they're going to resolve Escape Shift or anything against me right now. Alright, just get this thing out of here. All right, Risen Reef triggers. Even that four mana untapped. Alright, well our hand was really, really good. Game two. We'll see with game three what we got. But we're on the play with acceleration and double blood sun. And Risen Reef for a bunch of card advantage. Hand doesn't get a lot better than that.
I'm supposed to be playing... I'm supposed to be playing Leafkin Druid over Cavalier of Gales. Maybe one Cavalier, three Leafkin on the draw. Well, Blood Sun doesn't let you Blast Zone do anything. Blast Zone has no text besides add a mana because of, because of Blood Sun. Not a good hand against Little Teferi Scape Shift. But I don't think I'm supposed to mulligan a hand with good acceleration and, and a counter spell and like a Nissa, that's a good clock. Maybe I am. <clears throat> Hoping to draw into Blood, Blood Sun or Ashiok. Well, that's unfortunate. By turn turn three, we didn't draw an untapped land. Forest, or Blood Sun, or Ashiok. No, not another Nissa. Back-to-back uh, -back Nissas, just dead cards. Come on, deck. Not feeling confident we're gonna win this one. Not feeling confident we're winning this one at all. That would have been a lot better to draw last turn, where I could have gone Nissa plus Leafkin Druid. But yeah, we're gonna need interaction here. Blood Sun, Ashiok. Anything like that. Like kind of messed that up after the attack. I was hoping my opponent wouldn't block because I realized I thought like right whenever I made the attack, I was thinking I was gonna be able to Nissa and you know have like four mana and be able to play Omnath, but I realized that we're the only way we had four mana is with the breeding pools. Like we didn't have, you know, we don't have a uh, um. stomping ground or anything. <laughs> yeah, 
we lost this one. I mean, I, I kept a hand. So I kept a hand with just a negate for interaction, but it had just like good good ramp, negate, Nissa. And we've just drawn so many cards here and we've drawn zero other interaction. I guess we, we've drawn seven cards with zero interaction. Hey, there we go. Okay, maybe we haven't lost. We'll see if they have a counter spell. Okay. This is hardly my worst defeat. This has been a nightmare. Okay, not bad, not bad. Behold, nature's true power. Is there any point to mining Ashiok? Yeah, because if Ashiok gets, if they like, you know. If they get rid of Ashiok with, like, Prison Realm or anything, then it's gone. But Minusing, I can start nabbing, like, these Field of the Dreads. Field of the Dead, sorry. So I can try to grab the Field of the Deads from their deck by Minusing. And so yeah, we got we got rid of a Dovin's Veto and a Krasis and a Field of the Dead. Those are all good cards to get rid of. How would I give them a Field of the Dead? What do you mean? How would the minus four give them one? Or minus one give them one? That doesn't make any sense. I leave you. I <laughs> yeah, that's... Always that is not an argument. If it's the fifth card down, that is not a reason not to minus. Yes, our opponent still has draw steps. That's not a way to, to think of like the land shall come just whenever you're playing. I don't want to play. I will protect the virtue of this world. Think of it like this. If if you milled Rise, my elemental friend. Hmm. Block, blocked, kill one. If you mill, if Ashiok said mill the bottom four, would you do it? Because it's the exact same if you put the top four or the bottom four. It doesn't matter. It's just four cards. So like if if it said mill the bottom four, would you do it? Because the card they're drawing is still like random anyway. It doesn't. It's not affecting that. So thinking, oh, I'm not going to get rid of the top. Four because maybe the fifth card is the card that's the good card to draw, not the top card. Just just think of it as you're just milling the bottom four cards their library, or you're just exiling the bottom four cards. Obviously, it's slightly different, but I'm just saying as far as the for draw step wise, you can think of it like that. You're still just getting rid of four cards. I'm known for my excellent timing. Here goes nothing. But now, like. We're not winning this one. 
our Nissa draws weren't so good. Not the best time to be drawing that. Nature's true power. I will aid you. Harness the elements. I guess I need to attack with Lana Werolf also, but they would just had the 2 2 block the Lana Werolf and jump and stuff like that. So, yeah, Ashiok was going to be dying to this crisis anyway. Ashiok, not impressive as Blood Sun. Blood Sun was looking better than Ashiok. I wanted to split. So, I went with two Ashiok, two Blood Sun to try to split to not have just all Blood Suns. But honestly, maybe the way to go is just four Blood Suns, to be honest. Obviously, the Blood Sun would have been bounced by Teferi. But having, like, the mul the two Blood Sun out felt pretty awesome. Why, why would you think that Teferi cannot bounce Blood Sun when it says return one target artifact creature or enchantment to its owner's hand? Yeah, and Blood Sun draws. Yeah, that drawing a card is also really nice that Blood Sun does. Yeah, I can, Dreadlash. Alright, so we have a tough game one match up there. And so, you know, we're definitely relying on winning games two and three. I haven't... I don't have very much experience in that matchup, but I certainly learned a lot with just that... with that uh, match that we just played. Um, I learned... that Blood Sun is awesome... Ashiok, not so much. Ashiok's fine, but not not great. I would rather have Blood Suns. Okay, four Blood Sun. Not two and two. Also learned that uh, Nissa Nissa not very good in that matchup. Considering, you know, they have, like, the ability to get, like, the 2-2 two -two zombies and everything. The 3-3 three -three lands honestly kind of hurt. I think I'm going to be sideboarding out Nissas in that matchup instead of, like, the Cavaliers. Like, I, I would have rather had the Cavaliers than those Nissas. Those Nissas were not good. So cool, learning stuff. Hmm. 
Vampires is the matchup that I talked about before that I don't... I don't love my vampire matchup. Yes, I'm going to be playing Grixis after this. We're playing five matches of, of each deck today. Just wait, we're going to be playing Grixis. I'm not sure how you could really watch that game and think that Nissa wasn't bad. It c contributed nothing to winning. And having the multiples was horrendous. That's pretty good. Now we get to Risen Reef plus Lava Coil the next turn. Hey, Chief Seth. Yeah, River's Rebuke is certainly an option. I really don't mind River's Rebuke. I could see myself playing that. Yeah, the third melody could be Rivers. The thir melody is really for this matchup, stealing these Knight of the Ebon Legions. Um, something like the the second Fry. I don't really like Fry very much. Honestly, the second Fry could be a Rivers Rebuke. I think that's where you could fit one in there. Yeah, Rose Rebuke can be good in this matchup, too. I... If you consider Fiery Cannonade... Oh, I can't Nissa plus... Coil... Um, I don't think playing Fiery Cannonade over, like, the Flame Sweep is just a better card than Fiery Cannonade in this metagame. There are some cheap pirates that you want to be sweeping up if you're playing a card like that. Um, but yeah, it's an, it's an option, but usually whenever they get a whole bunch of zombies, usually they have another way to get more zombies or, but it's, it's not a, it's not the worst option. I would rather have River Zubuke, I believe. Witness the ties that bind us all. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Definitely a big fan of the Vampire of the Dire Moon that my opponent's playing. Definitely a big fan there. It's a good choice. So I'm making this block to make my opponent spend three mana just to save their Knight of the Ebon Legion instead of just chump blocking it. Whoa! They let it die? 
Wow. Okay. Wow. And that's why we make that block. And that's why I have this card in my deck. mind drawing a land here. I'm not it's only for one. One, two, three, four. Let's, yeah, let's do five. So a land would have been six, we would have drawn another card. I'd like my opponent to draw a fifth land. I think this is a good time for them to draw a land. It's not bad. I can, I can handle that. All right, and this one looks over. And the rank up stuff's kind of hard. We started at 95%. We're two and one right now, and we're back at 95%. We win two out of three matches forever and stay the same percentage. Like the very best, like the, the best players of the game, like whenever you look at like their win percentages, it's like two out of three. If you're just staying the same percentage there, that's, that's a hard standard right there. All right, let's get another Melody. It's kind of... Uh, I guess I want these veils. They're going to have their black removal spells. Their disparks and noxious grasps. I honestly don't know what to take out here in this matchup, though. Like Chandra giving us like more entrancing melody seems pretty valuable. Chandra early isn't what we want, but Chandra late is good. Like is it Risen Reef? But Risen Reef, as we saw there, like just ramping us up makes our other cards so much better. Is it like one Omnath? I guess it's probably one Omnath. Is it Leaf Kindred? Is it these Cavaliers? These Cavaliers are so big. Love the Cavaliers. I guess we have to do Chandra and Omnath. And... One Veil. 
and one Leafkin. Yeah, Fry for, like, I think Fry is a little too narrow. It does kill Vona and, you know, Leg Legion Lieutenant. But I think it's a little too narrow. I think a lot of the important cards it doesn't deal with. I don't know if we can stabilize the ground with like Nissa and stuff. It, Cavalier of Gales can fly over and win. I don't know. It's a 5 5 flyer. Sounds pretty good. Doesn't die to Noxious Grasp. I'm not going to melody that thing. I would like to melody this thing, though. We need one more green mana for the Cavalier of Thorns. So what? Did Nine Inch Nails write a song talking about their Cavalier of Thorns? their liar's chair. Yeah, Deckmaster's up. Deckmaster should be up and working. Well, in case of another Legion's end, I got to have the Veil of Summer here for this crisis. Because I can't let them just exile it and take my other crisis. If they want to just use like normal one for one removal on this 2 2, I'm not going to use Veil of Summer. I'm like just going to be like, okay, cool, you can kill my 2 2. Okay, cool, you can kill my 2 2. Oh, that jerk! That joke hurt you. Didn't even come closer to a good pun. Where's our more? Where's more green mana? I, I was gonna play this, and then I decided no, I'll I'll do four four with Veil. Vale, so should have played the Steam Vents last turn, but oh well. We have like all of our blue red lands. Yeah, I changed the deck after last round. I took out the two Ashioks for two more Blood Suns because that's all Ashiok and, and Blood Sun are for are for the are for that matchup. For the and so I just went with the 
I think I think Blood Sun's a better card, so I think I'd rather have four Blood Suns than Ashiox after playing that. Wow. All the blue red lands. Together we will prevail. Nah, I'm not stealing Legion's Lieutenant. The land shall conquer you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Moses. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, there's finally the other green source. Way down there, we found it. Whoa, we jumped up two percent again. We're going milk cartons over here. Getting that two percent. Guilds of Ravnica. Unfortunately, I think, yeah, Guilds of Ravnica, I have all of the rares and mythics. So I think all we're going to get is just gems here. Maybe we get a wild card. Take a mythic wild card. No, 20 gems. All right, one more match here with Teamer Elementals. Yeah, we talked about the different uh, decks earlier, and it seemed like everybody was saying different decks that they had been having good success with. Really, Arena? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is this? Just splashing around now? What do you think this is? The deep end? Or I guess the ocean? The ocean, you can splash around in the ocean. Not in, in the public pool. You can't splash around like that. Hmm. So it's not a very good hand since we don't do anything until turn four. But it is hard to mulligan like four four lands that are like good mana and three spells, like three mythics. <laughs> we have four lands and three mythics. It's hard to mulligan. Still think I'm supposed to mulligan though. Nah, whatever, I'll just keep it. Yeah, this is this is round number five, and so you know this is our this is our last match here with Team Elementals, and then we are going to be uh, switching on over to Grixis Control, and I'll reset Arena. Yeah, if opponent is aggro, aggro, we are kind of dead unless we draw one of our eight mana accelerants here. That's what I'm feeling like. I'm feeling like we're going to draw a Leafkin Druid. Or a Llanowar Elf. One of those two. I'm not sure which one. Hmm. That doesn't seem like either one. Y yeah, the only thing I changed in this Ultai Flash list, I think... I think the only thing I changed was the... Oh. Llanowar Elf was one, one card deep. Almost had it. Uh, the only thing I changed was the... I should have gone Sulphur Falls there. Anyway, the, the Shifting Ceratops in the sideboard. I don't think that the Shifting Ceratops are necessary in the sideboard, and so I replaced those with other things.
I think I got, I think I did like two more disfigures for aggro and two crafty cup purses for scape shift. Hey, what's up, Wrangler? Put some more Scrylands in Sultai Flash. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Your third and fifth turn, you don't need untap. You know, yeah, you don't really need those. A lot of times, turn one, you don't need it. I could see, I could see that. I could see another Skylander too. I don't know about two, maybe one. I could see another one. I've been pretty happy about that for that Sky, the one Skyland that I have in there right now. The one temple of mystery. I get, yeah, if you had to replace Poisoner, I guess you'd want to replace, like, Trickster is kind of tough to cast in the deck, but Trickster is a card to, that could be a replacement. Besides that, maybe a little bit more removal or counter magic, other, like, two mana stuff. I liked that add account. Like, I think that was a really smart play by the opponent to, to not just make the two one ones to just do two damage to me, but instead um, put the counter on Chandra. I think that was a good choice where now the Chandra gets to minus two twice in a row for these things. It's a good choice. Yeah, that's what Dire Fleet Poisoner does a good job of helping you with little teferi i i didn't really struggle against little teferi with having all those early creatures like i'd usually have one creature in play they would play little teferi and i would before. flash in another creature and have the two and then they can't really bounce both of them um so honestly like gales going cavalier gales here first before thorns kind of makes sense because you get to put two cards back and the second card you put back is some card you don't want to draw that you want to mill over with the thorns and so like that actually works pretty well but i'm going to go but the problem with that is i do have or like the the gales will just die to the triumph but i guess i could put two cards i don't want back and then shuffle them both and scry two no i'm just going to go the thorns first though because basically because of this triumph
<laughs> Ace Nix is back. Welcome. Yeah, you know me, I always gotta steal my chance to to play some Milky Chance. I'm not in any tournament right now. Pro hunts. Not in any tournament. Cavalier of Flame. That's a great card. Underrated card right there. Wow. Keeping both cards in hand. Interesting. Fire spreads fast with help. So I could team up Lava Coil and Omnath to kill the Cavalier. But I want to save Lava Coil because of Phoenix, honestly. So they kept both cards in hand. They liked both of them, so we'll see we'll see what our opponent has here against this. But yeah, so last turn I could have Omnath coiled the way that cavalier, or I could have, I could have even just played the Omnath first and put, played the land, put the counter on the ca this cavalier, to make it so they didn't get to trade. But honestly, like getting their cavalier out of there, and holding on to my lava coil, so I didn't do the the best, you know, for otherwise. But I, I think those are. I was happy trading my green cavalier for their red cavalier, and being able to hold on to lava coil. I was happy with that trade. It could be that I'm too scared. Honestly, with them being a red deck, it, it's possible that my line is going to end up not working out as well. You know, with them being a red deck and just being damage-based stuff, maybe just turning this Cavalier into a 6-7 uh, means I don't have to really be scared of Phoenix. If we'll see. Heard of me, then get ready to meet my flame. What? Did they just do minus six to that thing? Not being on fire problem. They just did minus six? I think they mistyped. Poor opponent. They're playing like this cool deck and everything, and they just messed up. Oh, I feel bad for them. And they didn't they didn't even activate their other Chandra. That's unfortunate.
I guess Disdainful Stroke doesn't counter Big Chandra. But no, neither does Negate. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. A good, yeah, it was a good game that ended like that. They had a cool looking deck too. Something different. All right, so Coil great against Phoenix, but doesn't seem like it's good against anything else. Melody good against Phoenix also, but costs a lot more mana. I guess I have things that are just, I guess Gales, Thorns, Krasis, those are all just bigger than Phoenix. Maybe I just don't need to be that scared of Phoenix. We'll see. So yeah, this is a different yeah, this is a different deck than the Team Golos we played the other day that had Star of Extinction. This is like that was a donation deck that I was playing there. This is my preferred elemental deck. Hmm. This is the kind of hand that if we don't draw, mana is gonna end up being pretty bad for us. Terrible draw step. But we're on the draw. We got a lot of lands in here. Let's hopefully draw lands. Another terrible draw step. <clears throat> well, if I know those were my first two draw steps, I'd be mulliganing really hard. I'm going Krasis here. Anyone need a fire if we draw a land. No? If we don't draw we a land, we're this together. in a lot of trouble. Okay. Yeah, that's what it kind of looked like, is that the client lagged whenever they were choosing X. And the X just ended up being 6, because then it like immediately passed turn. And I, I feel like my opponent wanted to cast the Chandra. Or, like, sorry, activate the Chandra. I want to go Thorns this next turn. I can't believe Mother Ludi gave us homework. Hmm. No thorns. We're going Krasis again, looking for land. So is Omnath Scapeshift good? You get to draw eight and you put eight counters. I don't think so, because most, like, think of all the times you'll have scape shift that you don't have Omnath, and you're just not really doing anything with your scape shift, and there's there's just a lot better ways to be playing scape shift, as you've seen with, like, the Field of the Dead decks. I don't, like, those decks, I don't think you really want Omnath. I don't think you need that. So basically, while that specific scenario is obviously a good scenario, it's just not a very reliable scenario and not one I don't think you need to I don't think you need to build around that throw another punch and you're gonna so what I have like three removal spells in my deck right I think I think these are the only three the two melodies and the coil <laughs> like my three creature removal spells that I have still in my deck and we've just drawn all three against like all these zero creatures and like not enough mana to play these things anyway. That's wonderful. Please no big Chandra. Darn. 
Anyone who stands in my way is getting sizzled. Well, if we draw land, I can have Nissa can kill Chandra. We this is this is the turn we need to draw land here for this Nissa. Oh wait, no, it can't now. Never mind. Check that. Don't get to kill Chandra anymore. So attacking Lil Chandra means that they don't get to coil my Sulfur Falls. So to kill the Sulfur Falls, they'll have they have to minus three the big Chandra, which means that I don't gain the emblem. If I attack if I attack big Chandra, then I get an emblem, and then Lil Chandra minus two and coils this. So the Sulphur Falls dying either way, so might as well not gain the emblem, and we also take off one total, one more loyalty counter. My presence alone will guide you towards victory. Unbeat interloper. We can do this together. I don't feel like fighting through this anymore. I'm going to the next game. I, I don't know if we were actually 100... Like, we weren't 100% dead. But yeah, drawing all three of our removal spells and they're just having the Planeswalkers. So, all right, learned... Maybe I'm just not supposed to be playing these, these things. Maybe we just go this? <clears throat> so if I don't play removal, if I'm not playing removal, I shouldn't be playing the Chandra. I, we just don't need to play the Chandra. All right, we'll play one of them. Do we want Melody or Coil? Let's play one Melody. Yeah, that was, that was basically just a, a time saver. I was yeah, I was like 90, 95 percent dead. No, Blood Sun doesn't do anything against Nissa. This is a really good hand, but it's this is a difficult hand to put something back with. Yeah, Phoenix and Cavalier are both expensive to steal, yes. They're both very good to steal. It is certainly a late game card. Which is why it was really unfortunate that we kept, you know, I had like one in hand and then we kept drawing other ones. It's just better than any, it's better than the other cards I have in my sideboard right now. I honestly don't know what I'm supposed to be putting back here. We are currently playing Teamer Elementals.
Alright, set some land drops. Living in a monastery full of firebrands? I can't believe Mother Ludi gave us homework. A little greedy. Making two creatures with Chandra. So they don't have instant speed removal here. Now Chandra will die if they minus to Lava Coil. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remember this one? So we're gonna have Krasis for seven next turn. It's a pretty good Krasis number. The land fights for us. Four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's the real test if the red deck can handle Nissa Krasis. That's a, just a really hard thing to handle. What card has the most impact in standard? Three mana to Fairy or Nissa? Like out of those two, I would probably say. Right now. I guess you'd probably have to say three mana to fairy because of how scape shift is really utilizing it to go along with Esper and other random decks. As far as any card at all in standard, the, like the most impactful standard card is definitely Land of War Elf. Hmm. And, I don't know, maybe Thought Erasure right after that. All right. 4-1 with Teamer Elementals. Very, very good showing. Come on. Come on, Arena. Load, the, load all the decks. You can do it. You can do it. Load them. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, really good showing there for Teamer Elementals. We did lose to the Scape Shift deck. That was our loss. But um, while, while I had a kind of a, a plan for that matchup... I hadn't really played it before. It's just not a deck you see just just an absolute ton. I knew that that was going to be one, as I talked about before, that like my game one was going to be really bad against them. So I had a lot of stuff in my sideboard for it, but uh, certainly learned a lot from just playing it that one time. Learned that Blood Sun is better than Ashiok, so just going with the four Blood Suns instead of Ashiox. And then when sideboarding... I cut the thorns and trimmed a, a Cavalier of Gales and kept all the Nissas in. And honestly, I think that we should just be cutting the Nissas in that matchup. Even with us having... Well, obviously when we have Blood Sun, they won't be able to get 2-2s. Two but it's pretty easy for them to get 2-2s two still. Like, you know, even without resolving Scape Shift. I guess that's what I mean. And Nissa making 3-3 three, three lands 
isn't very valuable. Like three threes aren't very valuable against two twos because two two twos can block and kill a three three. And but your lands are definitely valuable, and so I don't think that's a matchup where I really liked the Nissas. So that's that's a card I'd be taking out there. Uh, yeah, Escape Shift is a very good deck. And so, yeah, I, I like having the four Blood Suns there because that's a that's a game, matchup that we're just really behind game one. And then games two, games two and three are still tough, but we're going to need to win a, a very large percentage of games two and three in that kind of matchup. So I like having all the Blood Suns. My, my 75 here is not uh, super great against aggro, but we saw there still handled the, the Vampire deck. The melodies were really good at, against the Vampire deck and everything. Oh yeah, we're talking about maybe a Rivers Rebuke, and I wouldn't—I really wouldn't mind a Rivers Rebuke. Rivers Rebuke is is definitely good against the Scape Shift deck, um, especially how they're playing Enchantment Removal with like Prison Realm. But then yeah, all their zombie tokens and everything just bouncing everything. The thing is, like they they do get to re like they usually have a whole lot of mana and can replay everything, but that's that's a card that that we could have. Rivers Rebuke's good in in Nissa Mirrors. Like other Nissa decks. Um, what do you do when Blood Sun gets Ixalan's Bindings? Mm, just try not to have it get Ixalan's Binding. So that's why you went two Blood Sun, two Alpine Moon. That's why I was thinking with like the Blood Sun um, and uh, Ashiok, but Alpine Moon is just kind of horrible. I don't think Alpine Moon's any good at all. I would, I just, I would just rather just play the four Blood Suns. I, I would hate to have like a game like where we just have Alpine Moon in our hand and not Blood Sun, because Alpine Moon, like, with Alpine Moon, just I don't think it's really even that good in that matchup. Like, I, I don't think it's. I would rather play two of like just a card that's better than two Alpine Moons because. Uh, I guess, yeah, for those of you that don't know Alpine Moon. So it's it's one mana, which is a lot better than three, and it shuts down any non-basic land. It, but it does turn it into a five-color land, which that's a little bit of a downside. But the problem with Alpine Moon is you need two of them in play. Like, you need one to be able to name Field of the Dead, and you need one for Blast Zone. The, the fact that Alpine Moon is so weak against Blast Zone, I don't want to play it. Because even if you even if you have Field of the Dead shut down, they can like scape shift, still grab Blast Zone, Blast Zone away your Alpine Moon, and then start playing other lands and use their other ramp spells to play more lands, and then now they have all the Field of the Deads in play already because that scape shift. So, Alpine Moon is just a card that I'm not interested in playing. Now, if we have Blood Sun, if we play Blood Sun, we have the one Blood Sun and the Ixalan's binding it, we are in for a bad time. I'll give you that. But I would I would rather lose to that scenario. I think that scenario is going to happen a whole lot less than Alpine Moon actually do anything, kind of thing, or the other way around. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. Uh, all right, Marco, you're just joining. But yes, we had we had two Ashioks and two Blood Suns in before, and the Blood Suns were just a lot better than Ashiok. Ashiok was okay, but not as as good as Blood Suns, and I just want to switch it to Blood Suns. Anyway, there we go. Teamer Elementals, good deck. Uh, I really like where this is at now, as opposed to where I had it before. Um, yeah, this this felt like a, a very strong deck here. And I think that the Scape Shift deck is, like, you know, maybe your weak point, especially game one. So I actually really like having all four Blood Suns in the sideboard for that matchup. I think, I think this deck is honestly pretty good against Esper. Um, as as I have it here uh, against Esper, like control with without Hero of Precinct One and everything, uh, like the the Planeswalker control deck, uh, I'd be taking out the Leafkin Druids, the Lava Coils, the Entrancing Melody, cutting all nine of those, and bringing in Veil of Summer, Negate, Disdainful Stroke, Fries, all that kind of stuff. I guess that's ten cards. So that's cutting nine, bringing in ten, and so I'd also cut one. I don't know, like an Omnath or the Chandra. I guess you don't... Well, the Chandra is good at, at picking off the other Planeswalkers. I guess so is Omnath. have to trim one other card. Maybe a Cavalier of Gales because of Narset. Yeah, I guess probably the Cavalier one Cavalier of Gales. But there we go. So 
Um, all right. Uh, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But that's it here for Teamer Elementals, our first deck on the Rank Up Sunday. Hope to see you for the next deck. All right. Take care.